room and it hits me every single time. Um, and so much of that is to do with Brianna's oh, exquisite Brianna. music. Oh, yeah. Yes! Jessica! <laughs> Jessica Hendy has a heart like, uh, anyone who knows her, Jessica has a heart like nobody else. And Brianna's brilliance was, she just got into that heart and like literally plucked the guitar strings of it. That's a talent, seriously, not to yeah. be cheesy, but that's a talent. Jessica Hendy, <laughs> you have been around. Everyone loves you for a reason. And this is what I have to say. You all know how talented she is. You all know everything she does, but she's also the kindest person in the world. She's the yep. most hardworking person in the world. Mm -hmm. She is the smartest person you will ever work with. I have never had an experience with anyone in my life, and Michael will agree, yep. this is the real deal. Yes. And in, in this moment we're living in a reality TV and social media and everything where talent doesn't matter anymore, I truly believe this time Real talent and real kindness is breaking through. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! And I believe we believe in the show with all of our hearts. I call it a legacy piece because I believe in my obituary is written. They will say he produced Walking with Bubbles. <laughs> I do. Yes. Work. I just took a boost on her curtain speech before we fawn over this. Now she's after tonight. This is an icon, but yeah. um, I am a CCM devout now. Woo! Aiden, Aiden had four interviews with Jessica. Yeah. Aiden did this lighting design with four instruments. I'm not even lying. Um, go, Aiden. No, no, no. We gave Mark three dollars and said, "Now this set needs to be beautiful." And he said, oh, I got you. And then we got to discover the great Richard Hess from CCM. Yeah. New York debut. I can think of about fifteen directors who wouldn't have their Tonys if Richard had made New York his home base for the last. Year. Yeah. I can promise you that. Here I am with um, lead co-producer Michael Dangora. I've known Michael Dangora for years, for years, and you have come a long way. And this guy hails from Lincoln, Nebraska, and he came to New York in like 2000, and he never, never left. He's a graduate of um, Manhattan Marymount College, and he came here to um, produce theater, and he's just been doing it ever since. A lot of people dream to do it, they, they aspire to do it, but he just does it. How does, how does it feel? to be a seasoned producer and you, you still look so young. <laughs> um, well, the what fact that you're just saying like you just keep doing it, like I don't actually take the time to think about it because like I have to go home after that. I have to go back to the theater after this party and like clean up the dressing room tonight. Like there's always more work to be done. There's always another project that needs something done. So uh, sadly, I don't get to enjoy it that much, but I actually really like the work actually. You know what I mean? Like I don't mind doing it. And that you do. Um, with Michael and, and um, his partner, Tom, it really shows that hard work pays off. I've seen him boots on the ground promoting off-Broadway. He knows every ticket sold. And he went from doing that from shows like like Naked Boy Singing and, and P-Town, the, the, the show Icons, these small shows. And then now, you're, now you produce Caroline or Change, and now you have Manilow. Um, you have the Barry Manilow show coming to Broadway. How does it feel to go on that journey? You always like have this beautiful picture in your head that it's going to be this easy, beautiful journey. You're going to be winning Tony Awards and standing on Radio City stage. and But then there's so many twists and turns along the way. Yes. And you, uh, it, it never turns out how you planned. And you kind of have to just accept it and roll with it that this is my story. And I don't really get to write it. I just kind of have to... I don't get to write it, but I get to ride the wave of it, you know? Uh, okay. So... You've been really, um, you've been producing forever, um, but I've noticed you being more intentional about your work. Um, especially during the pandemic, you were so resilient, you were still producing. Your virtual fundraisers were Emmy nominated. Your virtual fundraisers were more star studded in the boxes than the Brady Bunch. Oh it was like it was like a Brady Bunch of celebrities. But you, what, what's more important is you're super intentional about what you're doing, whether you're raising money to, to help um, businesses stay afloat. Um, you did the show Addy and Uno, which um, really, really talked about disability and inclusion. And now you're doing this show that spotlights mental health. Why is it so important to you, for you to talk about this with the show? I mean, I always loved like the glitz and glam of theater, but it was always the shows like like Rent, for example, where I was like, oh, this is about something. This, and it changed my life. 
and I realized, oh, that's the power that theater has to to change the conversation in society. The way what Rent did for the gay community, for example, and to really like to be so multicultural on Broadway in the '90s was very groundbreaking, and and that's what inspired me. And so that's just what I I never really intentionally set out to do that, but. Those are the projects that we're most drawn to, I think, you know, because they have something to say. I know that when you first saw this reading, you went in with, like, no, not the expectation of producing it, but then you saw it, and you're like, you and Tom were like, we got to do this. We have to do this. We should have done, we should have started this yesterday. Yeah, she has a unique story. She has a fascinating story. She has a beautiful story, a story about resilience and a story that I don't, I don't think we've heard a story about mental illness told from this perspective before. And that's what I think is so interesting, that it, it, it talks about mental illness from the perspective of the, the caregivers, the, the people who are loving the, and trying to help the people who are going through this terrible thing. And that's what I think so many people can relate to in the audience, and that's why it's striking a chord with people. This is a true New York story. As somebody that's been here since 2000, I've been here since 2006, I grew up in New York. It's so familiar. It really sets the tone right away. Just the, the sound of the subways and everything. And even the locations. The locations of the TJ Maxx. The locations of the playground in Central Park. We know these locations. Um, does it really truly feel like a New York show to you? It does when I leave the theater and I encounter a, an unhoused person. And I realize they have a story. They didn't just end up there. They have a family. They have loved ones. They have, they have a, a support system that doesn't know how to get through this problem yes. with them. And so it's a New York story that, as cool as it is, they're like, oh, TJ Maxx on the Upper West Side, I went there today to buy gifts for the cast today because it's mentioned in it, you know? But it really is about the people of New York. And, um, and it makes you look at certain issues that affect New Yorkers a little bit differently. And I think with a, hopefully a lot more heart and a lot more compassion. And speaking of that, and, and that you're one of my favorite people in you're New York. You're one of my favorite people, Gerald. I love this kid. <laughs> All right. He's ridiculous. He's ridiculous. <laughs> totally ridiculous. All right. And a Leo. All right. Thank, thank you. you All right. Congratulations. Congratulations.